Thus has Japan. My Japan. It is lovely. Here, breezes, soft and fragrant, whisper the story of the moon goddess to feathery little pine trees. Here, dainty bridges hover over tiny streams, like hummingbirds over flowers. Here, sacred fish ripple pools of water, cold and clear as winter sunshine. Here, too, stands Fujama holy mountain, reaching down to the boiling center of the earth and soaring up to touch the stars, commanding us to fulfill our certain destiny, to rule. Yes, my Japan is lovely, is it not? This too is my Japan, the frame around the picture, the hard backbone of the graceful bamboo tree. Flimsy buildings made of paper and wood, one vast torch waiting to burn at the drop of an incendiary <laughs> Look again. Neither fire nor earthquake can level our city. You are finding that out, are you not? Nor of your bombings particularly impress us. London was bombed. Did England die? Tokyo, Osaka, Yokohama, drop your bombs. You cannot destroy Japan by turning cities into black and bubble, by wiping out a few inexpensive lives. You are finding that out too. You cannot destroy Japan because you cannot destroy its heart, the Japanese people. You say you can, and the message of Poles amuse us. You say you can destroy us by starving us out. <laughs> you forget that we're not like you. We have no soft bellies crying for beefsteaks and butter and candy. We live well on simple food, easy to get. Starve us? It is easier to starve a fish in the ocean. You say you can destroy us by making sacrifices. How we suffer when you do not have a full tank of gasoline. How devastated we are at the sight of you jammed into pleasure trains. How we tremble when you have to wait to get into movies, restaurants, nightclubs. Sacrifices? What a delightful and foolish sense of humor you have. Or do you really take yourself seriously? We don't. We think you're stupid. An admirable quality for an enemy to have. You say you can destroy us by outworking us. <laughs> you must forgive me. This is one of the most amusing ideas of all. You have not met our workers, have you? Meet them now and see why I laugh. They work long hours in you two, twice as long quite often. Why not? They are not working clock. They are working to win the war. They do not make as much money as you do. Well, they are not working to make money. They are working to win war. They work every day of every week. Is this so strange? They are not working to get days off. They are working to win the war. And they stand for hours in long lines to buy these Japanese war bonds. Ten minutes later, again you show your stupidity by assuming that we are like you. We hold our bonds to win the war. 
You say you can destroy us by outfighting us. You cannot. You cannot outfight us because the path ahead of you lies straight up the steep and rocky mountain of Japan. And it is slippery with blood. Your blood. You are a nation of bargain hunters. You will not be willing to pay the full price of victory. In pain, in work, in money, in lives. Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Saipan, Iwo Jima. You boast of them as major victories. To you, they are. Us, they are minor defeats. The loss of violent outposts. Look at the score. Very well. Look at it. You sent your finest troops against these outposts. They died by the thousands. Here they are, massacred, slaughtered. But you took the island, you say. Yes, we expected you to. That is why we garrisoned them with second-rate troops. The best of your lives for the worst of ours. We, too, know a thing or two of our bargains. You have not yet faced the best of our armies. You have faced only 10% of our worst. Our first-line fighters, Millions of them wait for you on battlegrounds of our own choosing. Wait across vast waters which send out your supply lines and weaken your fighting strength before you even reach. They wait in our Japan, in China, in Burma, in all the other half of the world. Our half. And they laugh at you because you are so wrong about them. They have reached full strength, you say, and there are no more replacements. Listen well. More men, many more, enter our armies every day, month in and month out, and we lose in casualties. They are ignorant little savages, you say. Ignorant? Ninety percent of our armies can read and write. Can you say the same for your own? Little? All divisions of our first line fighters, our real armies, are big men, the kind you describe as six-footers. Savages? No, merely realists who face facts. It is a fact that the strong rule the weak, so we rule the weak. It is a fact that the strong remain strong only if they exercise their strength. So, we exercise our strength. It is a fact that the lower the birth rate among the weak, the less potential danger for us in the future. So, we control the birth rate. It is a fact that prisoners taken become a liability after they are drained dry of useful information. So, we either transform the liability into an asset labor for our rice fields and factories, or we write off the liability completely. For further details, you might speak to those of you who were so long our guests in the Philippines, those who still live. It is a fact that human lives are cheap. Unlike you, we have no cowardly illusions about their value. So we spend lives freely. Yours and ours. Freely, did I say? I am too modest. Lavishly is more accurate. I refer you to what my Japan told you early in the war. 
We are prepared to spend 10 million lives to defeat you. How many are you willing to spend? Think well before you answer. And remember what you pay to dig a few thousand of us out of caves on Iwo Jima. Only a few thousand. And there are 70 million of us left waiting for you. 70 million who have planned for decades to destroy you. Who await eagerly and passionately the sacred honor of dying to halt you. Who will stop at nothing, nothing to crush you. 70 million people, if you will, will be dug out of caves. Japanese caves? You give no one but yourselves credit for the ability to hold aces up the sleeve, do you? There are caves in China, a China so near to us, a China we control. Should you edge uncomfortably close to our home island, it would be simple to move across the narrow sea of Japan, would it not? A move of only a uh, hundred odd miles. Already we have much of our industry there. And then, imagine, if you have the nerve, what it would be to dig 70 million of, out of buildings, gullies, caves, mountains, in a country as large as yours. Imagine even trying to pursue us into such a vast fight. You have seen a fly trapped and attacked by the spider. Come close, and you will die in the same way, blood white. No, we have not even begun to hurt you. No, you, us. Our war has not even started. We know this because we know the heart of Japan. You do not. We are not Germany. A walnut, we are Japan. A mountain easily eaten once the shell is cracked. A spider web, a flame that feeds on hate of you. Let the game begin. We gamble only once for all time, and the stakes are all or nothing. Perhaps I disturbed you with my harsh picture of what lies ahead. So feast instead on this, the beauty of my Japan. It is more to your taste for a world of make-believe rather than one of realities. No, I must not disturb you. I must not awaken you. Your dreaming is pleasant and useful to us. For you dream of victory rather than work for it. You talk total war rather than fight for it. You smugly expect peace at bargain rates instead of on our terms. By all means, come to my Japan if you dare. And welcome. It is beautiful here, as beautiful as the sight of your blood on our bayonets. <laughs>